Welcome to the Saving Lives Podcast. I'm Eddie Joe. Today is the 23rd of November of 2020, and the article that I'm going to be discussing today was published just a couple days ago on the 16th of November. And I actually took apart this study on Instagram and got a lot, a lot of good feedback and good reviews for it. And therefore, I decided to go ahead and share this article on my podcast. The title of the article that I'm using as a citation to this particular episode is Predictive Values of Neutrophil to Lymphocyte Ratio on Disease Severity and Mortality in COVID-19 Patients, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So before I get started, I want to tip my hat off to these authors for coming up with this systematic review as well as meta-analysis and having it published. Good job. Also, this article is completely free for you to download, read for yourself, and interpret the data as you choose. Don't trust me. I'm just a guy in front of his computer with a microphone talking about articles and my interpretation of them. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're listening to my podcast or follow through my, with my work, chances are you take care of COVID patients. And we're all trying to find whatever edge we could possibly find to help us better take care of these patients. So the question is, could a CBC with a differential, you know, just a regular run-of-the-mill CBC that we get on all of our patients every single day, tell us who's going to do well and who's going to do poorly if they have COVID? It's a pretty intriguing question. And what these authors looked at was using the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. Basically, you divide the absolute neutrophils over the absolute lymphocytes. And they proved that this could be quite helpful. It could help us potentially identify who's going to be critically ill and who isn't from COVID. I know it's hard to predict this as, you know, both you and I have possibly struggled. Well, I know I've struggled, but possibly you've struggled. When you've made phone calls to family members every single day, wondering if they're going to turn the corner and when they're going to turn the corner, or if they're just going to go ahead and crash on us. Before we continue on, though, a quick word from our sponsor. So I already brought up about using the trusty CBC with differential that we mindlessly order every single day for our patients. What if there's a calculation that we could use? Obviously, I already mentioned the, the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. The article that I am using as a citation, which obviously you should read for yourself and not trust me, describes a multitude of uses in the past where we have found the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio to be useful to predict severity in different illnesses. The reason behind the ratio of neutrophils to lymphocytes is that it could be used as a marker to predict systemic inflammation. Those of us who've cared for COVID patients, especially those of us who are in the intensive care unit, know that patients get really, really sick after about a week or so that they've been suffering from the illness. And the reason why they're suffering so much is because of the systemic inflammation. Hence, that's the fact why steroids work on these patients. And again, since COVID-19 is an inflammatory issue above else, it makes sense that the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio has been investigated by researchers out there to predict outcomes. Now, if we could predict outcomes from a simple CBC with differential, which just costs costs a few, few dollars at the end of the day, we should use it to the best of our ability. So let's appraise the study. This paper was a systematic review and meta-analysis. To those of you who are unfamiliar with the terms, a systematic review is, at least in my own words, an extensive Google search, but obviously using more official means, on the topic. One has to uncover every single article, paper, and study on the the matter when they're compiling a systematic review. Then a meta-analysis is when they combine the data of all these studies that you know, obviously they have to meet certain quality thresholds and they do a whole bunch of fancy number crunching that I'm not going to go ahead and do on this podcast because you'll, you'll get bored to death. But these authors were able to identify 298 studies, but ended up just using 19 good high quality studies to crunch up these numbers. So that means that they spent a lot of time weeding through the junk to find what's good and what isn't good. I'm taking advantage of the fact that I have your attention, obviously, to teach you what a systematic review is, as well as what a meta-analysis is. But there is another important statistical number, and people always ask me to teach a little bit more about article interpretation as well as statistics. So this is me just quickly going over it in the most interesting way I could possibly think of. So the next thing is something called area under the curve, which is, in short, is AUC. And I've gone over the area under the curve before on different methods like Instagram and on my webpage. But bottom line is that AUC is excellent for predicting disease severity as well as mortality. For those of you who are not familiar with the receiver operating curve or AUC, it well, 
receiver operating curve is ROC, but it basically takes into account the sensitivity as well as the specificity of a test and then combines them. If a test is 50-50, like a flip of a coin, the AUC or ROC is 0.5. If it's one, that means it's a perfect, perfect test. And in the show notes, I have some citations of a really two-page, quick, easy-to-read article on uh, receiver operating curves and area under the curve that you can read for yourself for further information. That'll be at eddiejoemd.com slash, I think it's uh, NLR. So obviously, I just mentioned that an AUC of 0.5 is not helpful. In medicine, though, for when we appraise these studies, we consider that an AUC greater than 0.9 is outstanding. If it's between 0.8 to 0.9, then it's an excellent test. If it's between 0.7 and 0.8, it's acceptable. But if the test is less than 0.7, it's really, really not a good test. And there's a gray area there where we really don't know what to do with that particular data. Obviously, like I mentioned before, there's more data with regards to this and deeper explanation that are beyond the scope of this podcast. And like I said, I have a linked article that's free for you to download on the show notes and the, the article's titled is free for you to download but if you want to just google it it's called receiver operating characteristic curve in diagnostic test assessment now that we got a little bit of intro to statistics out of the way the major question here is is the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio any good is it worth for us to put it into our practice and calculate it on our patients at least as a baseline or every single day And so in this article, the ability of the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio to predict disease severity was an AUC of 0.85 when they combined the outcomes of several different studies for this meta-analysis. Guys, this is excellent. And then the mortality fared even better. The pooled area under the curve of the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio for mortality was 0.9. Again, this is still excellent, but it's bordering on the cusp of being outstanding. This means that overall, it's it's pretty darn good to go ahead and predict both mortality as well as disease severity. But the next question that you're asking yourself, and I asked myself too, when I went ahead and read this study, and again, you have to tease this out of the study. You need to read the details for this because it's not in the abstract. The next question you're probably asking yourself is, how can we use these, these uh, neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio numbers in our practice to predict outcomes? Because we know it's good, but what cutoffs should we use? So what the authors did is that they conducted a subgroup analysis of different cutoffs for, for both the disease severity as well as mortality with their respective a- areas under the curve to see what numbers we should be using to help out our patients. It turns out that using a cutoff of the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio of greater than or equal to 4.5 has an area under the curve of 0.86, again, which is excellent, to pre- predict predict excuse me disease severity. Now, if the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is less than 4.5, then the AUC of 0.82 suggests that the patients may do well. With regards to mortality, they found that using a cutoff of greater than or equal to 6.5 five is highly predictive of mortality. And here the area under the curve is outstanding at 0.92. And at the same time, if it's less than 6.5, it's suggestive that they're not going to die with an AUC of 0.84. Again, guys, these numbers are not 100%. They're not absolute, but it'll at least give us an idea of how the patients are going to do. So we're approaching the nine or so minute mark and let's, let's wrap up this podcast. I know you got things to do. If you're working on a COVID floor or ICU, you should go ahead and calculate the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio of your patients and let me know what you find on your unit. I know that I crunched the numbers on my patients in the ICU and it seems as if they were all in double digits, which is pretty scary. But at the same time, one has to consider certain caveats. This test is not 100% of course. And there are always problems with any retrospective study, which again, every every study included in the mental analysis was retrospective. It's prone to bias. I mean, there there are a bunch of issues with it. One would have to honestly look at every single study in the meta-analysis and critique it, which the authors did, and these were the best things they they found. But one of the caveats that you need to consider when you get the data from the meta-analyses is when when were those studies included in the meta-analyses written? For example, did these patients know at that point that getting corticosteroids, in this case, dexamethasone, was an improvement to mortality. Like if those patients weren't getting steroids, then their outcomes would have been worse. 
and that would change what the numbers look like for the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. So there are just, just some caveats to this, and this is why you have to basically use everything with a grain of salt. Also, you know, we don't know about how this particular ratio is going to affect certain subgroups like the elderly or younger patients or underlying comorbidities, et cetera, et cetera. It all could get pretty muddy, but it's quite interesting overall. There isn't any perspective data on this, and ultimately, this is just a guide. I want to thank you very much for being supportive of the podcast, listening to the whole thing in, in its entirety. Also, bearing, bearing through the ads, they honestly help motivate me and keep the lights on. Sorry, you got to listen to them. Thank you very much to everybody who's out there taking care of patients. We're all in this together, and much love to everybody. Take care, guys. Download the articles in the show notes, and take good care of yourselves. Bye.